Yeah. So you can do the testing uh, like that only. We are live, Ansh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today's webinar is organized by IPTC Academy in collaboration with, with Andhra University and also supported by Creative First. So before starting with today's webinar, I would like to give a short presentation on IPTSC Academy. So I, at IPTSC Academy, we administer our education initiatives under the umbrella of IPTSC Academy. We have been awarded by World Intellectual Property Forum that is WIPF and which has also been signed by Sri Suresh Prabhu. And we have been also awarded uh, for intellectual property talent search examination and its educational endeavors. So IPTSC Academy has several educational programs under this venture. Uh, among them, one of them is intellectual property talent search examination, which is conducted on annual basis also, it helps various educational institutes to improve their rankings and accreditations. So intellectual, pro intellectual property talent search examination is the examination conducted annually by IPTSC Academy. And for this year, we are having the fourth edition. So IPTC or intellectual property talent search examination was launched in 2018 and is first and one of its kind IP Olympiad for intellectual property rights in India. And it has gained support from various organizations like SOCHAM, Ericsson, Creative First, et cetera, and various government bodies too. And it tests knowledge of various uh, individuals on various uh, IPR components like trademark, copyright, trade secrets, et cetera. So eligibility criteria of the examination is as follows. The school students of classes 9 to 12 are allowed to give the examination and the university students from the following domains are eligible to give the examination. Also from the fourth edition of intellectual property talent search examination, we are starting uh, to provide access to working faculties as well as the startups. So here are the exam guidelines of the examination. 60 minutes for college students for 60 questions, 45 minutes for school students for 45 questions. There's no negative marking for the examination and to qualify, the candidate must score 40% or above marks. Also, we have the regional rank holders that are declared only and only if we have 500 registrations from that region. So the process of examination consists of four simple steps. First is the free registration that would start uh, from the month uh, from the month of August and will be live for one or two months. Then we also provide course material for preparation of the examination. Once you go through the uh, course material, you can just uh, give the uh, mock test, which is organized in the month of November, which provides a brief idea how the exam is going to take place. Also, the final examination is conducted in the month of December, for which a window of fifteen days is open. So coming to the methodology, the selection criteria of the winner would be on the basis of the examination, uh, uh, the time spent on the examination, the time spent on each question, the number of questions attempted, et cetera. So here are the benefits and the rewards of giving intellectual property talent search examination. The winners are given prizes and scholarships and various innovative internship prop, uh, opportunities with various organizations. Also, winners are provided with certification and trophies from IPTSC. We also have a program by the name of Learn and Earn with IPTSC in which you can be a YouTube teacher, youth leader, and you can help us in promoting IP awareness. Also, you receive the authentic uh, IP interactive course material provided by our team, which provides you various knowledge about IP. So third edition of Intellectual Property Talent Search Examination Awards and IP Conclave was conducted on 28th of April and various speakers were invited for the same. Sri Suresh Prabhu was the guest of honor for the first and the second edition of IPTSC Academy Awards and Sri Anil Sastra Buddhi, Chairman AICT, was the guest of honor for the third edition of uh, 
IPTC awards. Thank you. Now I may call uh, Dr. H. Purushottam, uh, uh, DPIIT IPR Chair, Andhra Pradesh State IPR Nodal Officer for welcome remarks and his presentation. Thank you, uh, Shri Gupta, uh, for uh, organizing this event in collaboration with uh, Andhra University. I would also like to thank uh, Saurabh and uh, Sheetal also. Uh, we also signed an MOU with the IPTSC um, a month ago or three weeks ago of the basic uh, purpose to organize this kind of events and uh, awareness programs, uh, particularly for uh, universities. So this is the second program in the series. We are supposed to organize uh, a month-long program. So we decided that at that point of time, at least minimum four programs we should organize as a part of the IP literacy drive. Now, uh, IP literacy drive is very, very important. Still, though we have been uh, organizing across the country several IPR awareness programs by many institutions in the country after the IPR policy 2016 is launched, but still, uh, many people are not aware, in school level, college level, even the university level as well. So to enhance the IP literacy awareness or the IP literacy percentage in the universities, in the colleges and schools, uh, we have taken this initiative to organize a series of uh, webinars. Uh, because of this COVID pandemic, we are not able to go out and meet people to organize physical programs. So when I, in a way, it is also good, really cost effective and uh, really interested people can uh, uh, join and learn all these uh, knowledge uh, in a very cost effective manner. So this is the basic uh, objective and mandate of our partnership. Uh, as uh, she said, there are several uh, benefits. Uh, people who attend uh, these programs and register for the IPTS examination. So in the current knowledge economy, definitely uh, IP skills are very, very important along with their technical domain skills uh, because uh, we're all in the knowledge economy. In the knowledge economy, innovation is the driving force. If you talk about innovation, IP is the backbone. Without IP, there is no innovation. So they're all interrelated uh, phenomena and uh, very, very essential that uh, our students and our citizens and our all stakeholders, uh, they are getting exposed. They understand the intricacies, nonsense of uh, how to uh, create IP, how to get uh, IP rights and how to commercialize these IPs. So they're all uh, very, very important aspects. So I would also like to invite uh, my fellow panel speaker, uh, Ms. MS Devi from KNS Partners uh, is also a very popular and reputed law firm or IP attorney firm. They've been doing excellent work. In fact, they're also one of our panelled uh, agencies for filing patents on behalf of NRDC. We've been interacting with some of their senior colleagues at both at Delhi and Bangalore offices. So I hope all the participants will get some uh, experiences and some knowledge in the area of uh, IP, today's topic, what you decided was IP monetization and IP in e-commerce. So I will be broadly touching uh, uh, the IP monetization process of the aspects. And Ms. Devi will be talking broadly about uh, uh, IP and uh, with uh, more focus and more examples she can give uh, IP in the e-commerce uh, uh, arena. So these are the two talks will be uh, having today. So all the participants, I welcome all of you and I thank all of you for uh, registering and uh, showing interest uh, to listen to us. Definitely, you will be better than uh, your fellow students because uh, uh, with the sincere uh, effort, we are trying to educate our uh, uh, students and uh, since you have taken the time to participate, it definitely we will ensure you that at the end of the conference, you are going uh, with a, an enriched knowledge and uh, more uh, 
uh, understanding and wisdom in the area of IP in general. No? So let me share my uh, presentation. Are you are able to see my presentation. Punch. Yes, sir. It's fine. Yeah. So the topic uh, uh, I will be deliberating is strategies to IP monetization. No? So as I told you, IP is such an important thing in our life. Whatever we are using in our day-to-day -day life, or rather we moved from stone age to the technology age, is because of the IPs generated by our scientists, researchers across the globe. Whatever product or whatever we are using in our day-to-day -day life, all things have come from the research followed by IP protection and IP commercialization. So IP is such an important thing, but we unfortunately, we don't uh, uh, give much importance to understand and uh, uh, the culture, you know, to nurture the culture of IP. People who have got uh, adopted or abrased in that IP culture, they have become uh, highly advanced economies. Whereas in India, we have to go a long way to catch up with the rest of the advanced countries. So in my talk, uh, what I will be doing is, uh, I will be broadly, because it is IP literacy, right? I will be broadly talking the basics, you know, so on this topic, so what is IP? What is IP monetization? Why IP should be monetized? You don't monetize what happens. And strategies for IP monetization. If you have an IP, what are the strategies? What are the methodologies? You know? Then why IP, why IP is important for startups and MSMEs? Because the entire industry, you know, uh, the entire economy is driven by the MSME and startups. So why IP is important for them? And how IP is creating wealth? for the uh, individuals, for the organizations, for the nations as a whole, and how IP creating wealth, then how IP monetization, some case studies, That's finally followed by some concluding remarks. So this is the broad structure of my presentation. Uh, by now, I think uh, we have got enough awareness uh, by now, and we all know what are all the different types of intellectual property rights. You know? Intellectual property is nothing but it is the creations of the mind. So that is why from at least stage of a human uh, life, we always focus on strengthening our mind capabilities, mind functional, uh, functionality of the mind, you know. The mind is strong if the mind is uh, uh, tuned properly through by education, by logical thinking, reasoning and uh, uh, problem solving the capabilities those people are able to contribute, think differently, think out of the box, and they're able to generate this kind of inventions and generations which are required for our socio-economic development, you know. So that is why intellectual property means it is the creations of the mind. So how do we, that is why since the intellectual properties comes from our mind, so our mind needs to be strengthened or rather, trained to think differently, to think out of the box, to think logically, to think uh, solving the problems. So that is why in all our education systems, governments and uh, our parents are giving a lot of importance to tune our mind, to train our mind so that we will think innovatively. So that is the uh, purpose of education, which trains our mind so that we'll be able to contribute positively to the economic development of our uh, our own or our nation. So the broadly, the main intellectual property rights are like trademarks, which are nothing but brands, logos, words, slogans, jingles. They are called trademarks. You no, know? they are also used in the business. The next one is the patents. Patents are generally given for technical inventions. You know, only inventions will be given patents. Then copyright. Copyright means any written material or drawings computer quotes, you know, any artistic work or anything you express in original, for that one can get a copyright. Then designs, designs are nothing but the visual appearance, okay, the products where it's like, like the Coca-Cola bottle, all the product uh, packaging material, you know, there are all different designs are there, 
can be registered, one can get rights on that. Similarly, integrated circuit layout designs, for example, semiconductors, IC layouts, and the trade secrets, okay, like the know-how, the methods of doing something, only known to selected individuals. The best example of a trade secret is the Coca-Cola. No, nobody knows the secret of the formula except to the, the uh, owners and the promoters of that Coca-Cola. So these are broadly the six major types of intellectual property rights. So if you look at globally, what are the, or which is the leading intellectual property right? If you look at trademarks, which are almost 75 to 80% of the intellectual property rights across the globe are falling in the trademarks domain. So trademarks are everywhere, you know, all the marks which are used in the business like our Maruti Suzuki or Honda or Coca-Cola or uh, Tata, Mercedes, they're all trademarks, they're all represents the businesses or the products behind that. So trademark is such an important thing. Uh, that is why majority of our intellectual property rights are in the trademarks. So it is very, very important for all the uh, stakeholders of the innovation economy to understand what are patents, what are trademarks, what are industrial designs, how they uh, benefit the businesses. So coming to the IP monetization, what do you mean by IP monetization? IP monetization means the act of using intellectual property to generate revenue. So we are, I'm not talking about uh, how you generate uh, IPs or how you secure IPs, all those things have happened. So once you got a IP, your creation is apparently got a, a security, uh, you got a patent granted or IP granted, thereafter I'm talking IP monetization comes. So why IP monetization is important? What do you mean by IP monetization? IP monetization means using your IP, you generate more revenue or generate revenue. That is the purpose of IP monetization. So it is IP is a kind of an asset, that's what we call intangible asset, okay? Like the tangible assets, IP is also now a kind of an asset, which we call it is intangible asset, which can, has got an enormous power. See, if you tangible asset over use, it replenishes, you know, its quality will diminish. But whereas the intangible asset, it is perennial, will not be banished. So that is the advantage. That is why, and at the same time, many people can use the intangible asset. Whereas tangible asset, for example, a house or a car or any other property, only the owner can be only one. But whereas an intangible asset, the asset can be used by many people at the same time by the using the process called licensing or franchising or things like that, which we are going to discuss. So there are a number of ways to derive revenue from each IP, you know, which requires, of course, special set of skills, abilities, depending upon the type of IP, what we are handling. So with the introduction of the new laws and growing competition in the IP market, monetizing IP is becoming an increasingly important task, particularly for businesses. And so the IP monetization basically brings competitiveness to the businesses, creates wealth, creates employment opportunities, you know, and it gives you the kind of visibility, protection in the business. So that is why IP monetization is very, very important. And many IP owners in industry, academy, and government focus intently on creating IP, but their knowledge, how to effectively monetize it is very limited. So that is why generating IP or creating IP is one aspect, unless the IP is converted into your or commercialized it or transferred to produce products and services, which creates wealth and employment opportunities, it is no meaning for generating the IP. So IP monetization plays a very important role in getting the return on your investment, or return on your innovation, ROI, you know. So unless your IP is monetized, you are not getting any return on your investment or return on your innovation or invention. So IP monetization is a tool or a mechanism to generate revenue out of your intangible assets like patents, trademark, copyrights. So today, patent trading is also is an integral part of our financial world. Now, this is also now being reflected in our balance sheets, the patent strength and the patent valuation. In 2016, about 600 billion worth of uh, trading of patents have taken place. You know? 
and payments of royalties and patent license is also on the raise. So once you transfer a technology, once you commercial your patent, you're also likely to get royalties on those intellectual properties which you have commercialized, which you have transferred. So that is also constantly on raise across the globe. The development of IPSS is vital to the competitiveness, as I told you, growth and innovation of an entity or a state or a nation. So some of the industry leaders that I mentioned here, what is the importance of IP for their businesses? If you look at uh, the chairman of Quaker, John Stroud, what he said is, if this business was split up, I would give you the land, bricks and mortar, and I would take the brands and the trademarks, and I would fare better than you. So that is the power of IP. See, all these uh, fixed assets, they can be destroyed, whereas the intellectual properties, which lies in the form of these IPs like trademark copyrights, they are perennial, so one can make a business out of them. That is the importance. Similarly, if you look at the Coca-Cola company, first of all, uh, she said, if each building, factory, office, car owned could burn down in a moment, but the company could get back to operationalization, uh, building, buying everything lost due to the value and profit generated through its intellectual property. Namely, the trademarks, the franchisee contracts, the patents, licenses. So, to make you feel how important is IP for businesses, just have given these two quotations from the great industry leaders. And also, if you look at globally and in the last so many decades, the tangible and intangible assets in a business, you know, if you look at in the year 1975, the tangible assets like buildings and equipment, cash, bonds, inventory, and land is to constitute 83% of any company valuation. Now, only 17% was the IP or the intangible assets. And if you see in 2020, the transformation, has, how the transformation has taken, if you look at the tangible assets component as now is only about 5 to 10%. And intangible component, in any modern business now, or if you look at any of the uh, big companies, MNCs, uh, the tangible component is only 10%. The intangible components, you know, like uh, patents, brand value, customer data, software, these are all the intangible assets. For example, if you look at uh, uh, Microsoft, the company valuation, if you see, 95% of the company valuation at the market cap lies in the intangible assets like all these patents, trademarks, copyrights, customer data, the softwares. So that is how the intellectual property rights are playing a very, very important role in the today's business. Totally, the, the transformation has taken place. The value of a company is now based on the intangible assets. So if you want to trade or if you want to do business or if you want to buy or sell these intellectual property rights, you should also try to understand at what price you should buy or what value you should buy. So this is also again a very nascent area for as far as India is concerned. Uh, there are different methods or approaches are being used uh, in the developed economies. Uh, before buying an IP, you need to assess its value. You know? That is what we call valuation methodology or valuation of IP. There are basically three different approaches are there. One is the cost approach. The other one is a market approach. The third one is income approach. So before buying an IP or before uh, deciding you want to sell your IP, you should also know at what price you should sell this IP. So these are the three methods. The buyer as well as the seller should understand the basic methods of estimating the cost of selling this IP. So what is the first method? Cost method means to, it is basically a, a replacement cost. Suppose uh, you developed a technology, you developed a product to serve a particular need, you know, how much it costed to develop the technology, okay? So when you, once you know that number, say for example, our vaccine, uh, uh, COVID vaccine development uh, company, uh, the, the MNRA technology for uh, combating COVID, they spent around, I think maybe around $12 billion also, you know? So that is the cost. So when you want to, sell this technology or license this technology. So the cost is very, very important. So uh, estimation of cost is the basic thing 
you can make that cost estimation using three methods, you know. So when you want to sell the product or to sell the technology, so there are several considerations like whether you are uh, selling outright or whether you are giving license or the license again, you are giving exclusive license or non-exclusive license or limited exclusivity. So depending upon all these considerations, one can decide the cost, what price you can sell this technology or what price you can buy the technology. So these numbers are this cost have to be shared with the buyer and the seller. So cost approach makes to develop the technology, how much it costed. You know? So once you want to sell it, always cost plus approach is what we call. You also need some kind of a uh, profit on that. That is what we say cost plus the opportunity cost you need to add because you, see, you are trying to replacement cost. So if you want to create a similar kind of asset, how much it would cost, you know? that is the approach what we are trying to use and decide in buying and selling the intellectual property right. That is the cost, it is a, one of the oldest method. The second is the market-based valuation. Market-based valuation means, for example, uh, in Hyderabad in Banjara Hills, you want to buy a house or sell a house. So what is the market price in that area for similar kind of houses? You know, the same way for IP also, so for a similar kind of uh, product or a process, at what price others have purchased? You know? So same way you can, assess and say that this is the uh, market price. I wanted to sell my property, you know, the market price. Basically, what is the prevailing price for the similar kind of asset in the market? That is the basis. The third one is the income. So using that asset, for example, you bought a house, you know, or you want to buy a house, how much income or rent you are going to generate out of it in the future, in the remaining life of that asset. So from that income, whatever you are going to generate that income, that is not equivalent to the current income, you know. So they use a discount cash flow technique and arrive at what is the future value of the money to the current value. And they use the discounted cash flow technique and determine the price of the future value of the money to the net present value. So these are the three methods are the, are the product, the process, how much money is going to generate, how much profit is going to generate. Based on that, you can commute all these uh, 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 compute all these uh, gross income over its lifetime and bring that uh, or assess that value to the net present value so once uh, these methods are available before you depending upon the situation depending upon the buyer seller uh, capabilities so one can decide the general method um, methodology followed we arrive at this uh, uh, valuation is that when you, you are using whatever is the lowest uh, that is a standard practice. Income and market value, uh, whichever is the higher, that we take it from out of these two, and you compare with the replish, uh, replacement cost. So, whichever is the lowest of these two, that will be the generally the value one should take as a basic price for buying or selling the type of asset. This is of the general methodology is followed in advanced economies. Whereas in India, Mostly what we do is a cost method. So this is the cost I, I incurred to develop this technology. So I would like to at least get that minimum amount. So that is what many of the government institutions follow this cost approach with them. <laughs> so there are different strategies, you know, for monetization of the IP. So once you have developed a, uh, IP and you have secured the rights, the IP rights, then how do you monetize those? So there are the primary or the first or the most important routes for uh, monetization of IP is that using the IP by yourself, you can start your own company based on that IP. So in that process, you produce the product and sell the product to the market. So there is no uh, transfer fee or licensing fee here, but you will be using your own IP. That is what spin out. The other one is the licensing. If you don't want to use the generated IP, you can also license it. That is the second important uh, IP monetization mechanism. So third one is the joint ventures for the co-development. You can also go for that. Third one is the collateralization, securitization, sailor, leaseback. Or, uh, or also you can also sell your IP also outright sale. That is what we call assignment. So these are the uh, key strategies generally the institutions develop IP follow either sell the IP outright, that is what we call assignment, or you license it, licensing the licensing process, you give only the rights to use the knowledge. 
So that is what we call it is licensing. Or you use yourself and produce a product, you know. Or you can also partner with others to produce the same product by combining their technology and your technology. Or there are these are the basically the five uh, strategies to monetize IP. So the traditional patent monetization, nothing but that's what we talked about. Uh, uh, commercialization by licensing. You know? So they use uh, patents to make and sell product. Uh, then uh, use patents to build a startup company, what we discussed, and license patents to other companies also for their use. If you look at IBM, earns a revenue of about a billion dollars from their licensing of IP assets. Microsoft also uses its uh, software, you know. Uh, uh, to Android vendors, 70% of the uh, Android market share is uh, to Microsoft is only from the software. So there are this was, these are some of the new mechanisms for monetization. What is now happening? That is what we talked about outright sale, then uh, sale and leaseback model. So here also they combined uh, a few IPs. You know there are uh, few people, different people are owning uh, the pooling. That's what they call it. No, they combine all these assets together and sell it also accordingly, depending upon their IP rights and strengths, they share the revenues what they generate out of it. Then collateralization of IP rights, IP rights can also be used as a collateral guarantee and can be used to secure bank loans. For example, the New Delhi based LT Foods used its famous rice brand flower as a collateral to raise 200 crores to acquire US based rice company. Similarly, the securitization of IP rights is also possible. Of course, all these things are followed. Uh, many, many of these uh, new methods and new mechanisms of IP monetization followed in advanced economies, but still in India, uh, we are still at to uh, mature in this area. So, to assist the inventors uh, or the IP owners, there are also some organizations uh, uh, formed as a business organizations to help the IP owners. For example, Richardson, Oliver Insights, they also pull all these IPs and uh, license to others. They sell the IPs basically. Uh, so like it is kind of a IP exchange, IP trading, they do it. And another uh, recent example in India is intellectual ventures also the US based, I think. But they also now started an IIT Mumbai collaboration. They started this intellectual ventures also. Now I think the name has been changed recently. But Sagacious IP is another Indian company. They also facilitate such kind of a IP monetization. NRDC is one of the major agencies, government agencies here I work for, for uh, as a CMD. Here also, we, what we do is we get all the IPs of all the public funded research organizations and universities, and we analyze them. If there are some gaps in the IP maturity, we mature the IP uh, to a TRL level six or above, that is the minimum maturity level which is required uh, to attract uh, investors or buyers for the intellectual property, or particularly the patents. You know, so NRDC is one such a great organization which is helping many of the inventors uh, to commercialize, to monetize their IPs. NRDC has licensed, uh, transferred more than five thousand uh, technologies or IPs to SMEs in India and abroad. So another new organization is Agni in. Uh, uh, PSCS office, uh, Government of India, he also got a, a, a window in them to facilitate IP monetization from all these agencies. So generally, we, it is also important for understanding how this uh, IP monetization is basically what we call is also technology transfer, technology commercialization. That is also a tool or a methodology for IP monetization. Particularly in academic institutions, how this IP monetization is taking place. This is a, a model being followed by Association of University Technology Managers. So they follow the invention disclosure and assessment. That is what basically any scientist or faculty member invented something, they will disclose in the disclosure form to the IP cell so that the IP cell will evaluate it, uh, whether it is can be patented, whether it is meeting all the uh, patentability criteria or not, if it is meeting the patentability criteria, whether it can be commercialized or not in the nearest future, and they decide if it is commercializable, if it is meeting the patent, it has got a, enough market, then they will go for a patent. Otherwise, they may not even go for a patent, they may transfer it as a know-how or a trade secret, you know. Then 
once uh, ip is created one has to market it so how do people come to know about your ip you need to market it again the marketing is a, a, a subject by itself uh, the four piece of marketing we all know so in, they are four piece are also applicable to the technology as well so four piece means the price the product the place you no know, all these uh, things are also important the packaging are also important in this technology as well so the marketing has to be done aggressively uh, then once you do the market then you uh, create awareness people will evaluate your ip and they may license buy it or license mc licensing you know then the licensing uh, agreement will be signed once licensing agreement is signed then the technology transfer takes place from that point so once the technology is transferred the startups can start producing it bring it to the market and once they are successful in the market they become leaders in the marketplace so this is a, a, about a uh, seven domain areas and seven steps are involved in bringing in a idea to the marketplace so uh, the routes for commercialization or the routes for ip monetization basically predominantly used to channels are licensing or assignment licensing means you are giving your rights you know for a consideration the ip owner is transferring his ip rights to the that agency which is buying the rights the ip rights so this licensing that is what we call it so this licensing also there are different types of licensing exclusive or non exclusive exclusive means you are giving this uh, rights only to one party or you can also give to more than one party that is what we call non exclusive license generally exclusive licenses are more expensive because you are giving it to, to the only one party non exclusive means you are giving it to more parties the cost can be uh, reduced because you are giving to more parties the same amount you can realizing from more number of parties so licensing for manufacturing and selling that is what we are basically giving these rights you cannot sub license it when you are getting a license technology license you can't sub license to others of course it all depends on the negotiating power of the buyer but generally in the licensing they do not have the rights for sub license and relatively cheaper and limited period licensing always be a limited period 5 years 10 years or till the validity of the patent you know so then assignment means is absolute ownership is outright sale assignment means so you are selling your uh ownership absolute ownership so you like any other fixed asset land building you can also resell it or sub license it is bit expensive and perpetual rights one will get on assignment so while uh, concluding or while negotiating the licensing agreements it is very very important for uh, uh, the buyers as well as sellers to understand some of the important conditions of any technology licensing agreement or technology transfer agreement what are those things the definitions are very very important you have to define all the important key terminology what you are using in your agreement say for example product or a process you have to define it in your agreement if you don't define it in the agreement tomorrow some dispute arises the reference point would be what you have defined in the agreement if you are not defined then uh, the other party may lose you know the case in case of any such kind of dispute arises one example i can give you when we transferred one technology one ip rights to one company for a catalytic converter this catalytic converter used in the automobiles to reduce the air pollution you no know? so uh, the technology what we have licensed is the honeycomb uh, catalytic converter the structure will be having a honeycomb structure so one of the parameter we mentioned there was that the wall thickness of the honeycomb will be less than i think point uh, or uh, point uh, 2 mm you know such such a thin uh, wall should, should have <laughs> then we are while uh, commercializing that we are not able to get the point 2 we got i think point 2 2 mm so the technology receiver said you have not delivered your technology what you have promised in the agreement so i will not pay you your fee your technology transfer is paid though you got uh, the performance parameters all right but we are not able to get the thickness what we promised in the agreement you no know? because of the non availability of the technology for making the dye to so far in laboratory we were able to do it in a commercial uh, production we are not able to get that kind of a uh, wall thickness because of the wall thickness the thermal coefficients are, uh, are all uh, changed because of, there are some uh, 
uh, advantages, disadvantages, but uh, the technology receiver said, because we are not able to demonstrate, give me a technology which you have mentioned in the technology licensing agreement at a commercial scale. So your technology transfer is failed. I will not pay you the fee or the licensing fee or the royalty, whatever it is. So that is why it's very, very important to define and also better to give always the ranges rather than giving an absolute number. So the wall thickness could be 0.2 to 0.3. Had we mentioned that, definitely we could have met that criteria. So very, very important, like to define the, all the product specifications, process, conditions, purities, you know, yields, or whatever. Similarly, the roles, responsibilities, deliverables, product, process specifications have to be clearly mentioned in that. Either exclusive or non-exclusive, that are our assignment. What is the mode of uh, IP monetization that has to be mentioned here? Geography, where you are going to manufacture, where you are going to sell also has to be mentioned, otherwise it can create a problem. Uh, once you are successful, then uh, the licensor may say that I have not given a permission to produce uh, in other parts of the country. I have given only license to produce product only in one part as per the agreement. So all these things have to be negotiated to be captured in the agreement. Valuation of licensing fee, royalty rate, duration, that's what we also discussed, you know. So if you want to license, you want to ask for a license fee or a royalty, should have also basis on what basis you are asking. So that for that valuation is very important. The IP issues like who maintains the IP cost. See, the patent, for example, the technology is protected through patent. 20 years is a patent life. Who is going to pay the fees once the technology is licensed? So it has to be clearly mentioned in the agreement. Future developments, improvements, in case the technology is further developed, refined, better performance is achieved, whether the lab is going to give you the technology free of cost or additional charge, or they will give it to someone else an exclusive basis to create a competition for you. So all these things have to be clearly stipulated in the agreement. Similarly, infringements. Tomorrow, infringements happens whether the lab or the university will help you in fighting those infringements. Similarly, indemnities. Academic institutions definitely they ask for indemnity. On various other basis, you are taking this technology. We are not responsible for any court cases later. So that kind of a indemnity also has to be mentioned, otherwise they may see you also. Jurisdiction for settlement of disputes, where in case a dispute arises, where it will be settled, which courts are the jurisdiction that has to be mentioned, force measure has to be mentioned, and competencies of signatories or resolutions required in businesses. So these are some other very important conditions. Then IP protection is essential for startups and SMEs. I think by now most of you are aware. IP, if you have a patent in your business, it gives you competitive advantage. It restricts others to enter into the market because you have got a patented technology. You know? So that is a major advantage. It provides an exclusive bundle of exclusive economic rights if you got a patent in your business. So that is why uh, even venture capitalists look for IP protected businesses. If you have got a, a patented technology in your uh, startup company or MSME company, the investors would show interest because their investment is also secured because IP is protected. So that gives the protection to the, them against the competition. It attracts investors to make investment and protect the invest, interest of the investors as well. It also acts as a defensive as well as offensive mechanism. If you have got a patent, if somebody, once you are successful, somebody may file a suit against you saying that you have copied my technology. But if you have got a patent, always you can show it to them. I have not copied the government of India has granted me a patent. So, and that gives you a protection. Then provides new revenue streams for licensing, franchising, or sale. That's what we have seen. IP is must for exporting products to developed economies. Majority of these uh, uh, products, particularly pharmaceuticals, if you don't have a patent, you cannot export. You no, know? uh, even uh, uh, Amazon or Flipkart, all these e-market places also they don't sell your product on their uh, e-commerce platforms if you are not having any IP protection for your products. So, uh, Madam, I think is going to talk about this IP for you know, e-commerce and products and platforms. So, increase the negotiating power. You have got a patent, and as I mentioned to you, and we have also seen 85 to 90 percent of the market capitalization of major companies are lying in the intangible assets like IPs, trademarks, copyrights. And now we are also seeing how important is the IP on the COVID-19 vaccine and combating COVID-19 challenges. Globally, it is well known now. We are also requesting the World Trade Organization to waive the IP rights because the IP is so expensive now to, if anyone wanted to produce these vaccines. So these are some of the success stories. When I was at uh, NRDC, 
large number of uh, ips have been monetized commercialized one or two examples because uh, there are more than 5000 technologies or ips were commercialized it there but uh, one or two examples i would like to quote here the indelible link you know again it is uh, one of the uh, success story of uh, uh, CSIR uh, NPL has developed this technology. When you go for elections, they put a ink on our finger, you know. So this technology, we have licensed it to Mysore Paints in uh, Karnataka. Uh, this company is now producing and exporting these inks also in other countries. And every year, uh, the NRDC is getting about a one month to uh, crores royalty on this when there is elections are there, more ink is produced and more royalty we are getting. Similarly, the Amul, Amul baby milk powder, you know, Amul spray powder again. CFTRA, Mysore has developed, they are the one of the IP, and we license this technology, NRDC license this technology to NDDB, even till today this product is there in the market, so we transferred it about maybe 30 years back. The other day, about one month back, I met the CMD of NDDB, I asked him how this product is doing and what contribution is making to your balance sheet. He said more than 3,000 crores uh, uh, is coming from the Amul baby milk powder alone to that company by selling of the powder, you know. But this IP, what you have transferred at a very meager price those days, all of them are 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakhs uh, IP, the uh, commercialization charges we charged, but it is a contribution to the national economy. Similarly, the 10 and 20 HP tractors, the uh, Swaraj tractors, the Sonalika tractors, which are there in the uh, market, particularly for the small range, the 20 HP tractors, you know, Indian farmers, they don't need a big tractors, they, because we are all having a small lands, you know, farming lands, 2.5 hectares, 3 hectares. So for small uh, land uh, holdings, the big tractors are not required, the small tractors are required. So this again, CMERA, Durgapur has developed this technology. They are holding the IP rights. We commercialize this IP, but in the beginning, Punjab tractors, now the Punjab tractors have been acquired by Mahindra and Mahindra and Sonalika. These are the two companies who are manufacturing this, selling this. Similarly, the blood bag again is another uh, important technology. 65% of the market share is coming from NRDC licenses from the uh, these blood bags. Another important technology for transport is the lipo, uh, lipotypsin B. Uh, this is also uh, very, very important technology, particularly now the COVID, you know, the black uh, fungus is coming, you know, for the COVID the patients. This is the only medicine for treating that black fungus. So this again, a technology was licensed uh, by NRDC. So like that, there are many liposomal application B. This is the tech. Many, in fact, many people ask me uh, how to get this uh, lip, uh, uh, this injection, liposomal application B. So I told our licensee uh, uh, in uh, Lucknow, and I referred many people who wanted this injection. You know able to supply. There are thousands of technologies. NRDC basically uh, transferred or commercialized so many technologies which uh, generated more than 1 lakh crore, you know, from all these companies as a revenue to the national sector and uh, created employment of about a lakh people and we generated our revenue of about 100 crores, you know, uh, royalty in the form of royalty during the last 10 years and bulk of this royalty we returned back to all these institutions developed these technologies, uh, which uh, they gave to NRDC for licensing. So that is the model of NRDC. Again, there are different models for IP monetization. So you yourself can uh, use it or you license it or you engage some agencies to license it. That's what we have discussed about few agencies there. Now, NRDC is one such agency, very successful agency in the country, which helped uh, inventors to commercialize or monetize their IPs. You know? The role of again patents or IP, uh, we all know that you know the electric bulb uh, which was patented by Edison in uh, 1879, the kind of transformation it brought to the society. And similarly, one simple I, I would like to give one simple example to impress to create such kind of inspiration on the young students. You know, this patent means it need not be a very high-tech area, you know. A, an inventor from uh, UK, he invented this uh, Coca-Cola opening, you know, the can opener, small kind of slit and there it will be there. So here, just he will open it and on each can we open, he gets one tenth of a penny per can as a royalty. So that is the kind of uh, uh, impact uh, the inventions can make. I think I'm getting calls from Rita to close my presentation. 
So I'll be uh, doing it. So there are so many examples like this. Uh, uh, the COVID vaccine also, you see, they have spent around $12 billion develop this. And the global demand for this vaccine is 12 billion doses in 2021. It's so the kind of economic benefit or opportunity this invention is bringing is about $466 billion by 2025. So inventions are so powerful in creating wealth, employment. And also, if you look at uh, countries who have got more number of patents, their economies are also used. For example, China, USA, they have a large number of patents. That is why their economy is very strong because innovative products can be sold at higher price. So they are making more number of similarly the companies you look at it. Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, they're all sitting in thousands of patents. Because of this patent power, they're able to have a high market capitalization and also good turnovers. So I would like to conclude saying that IPR is a, a catalyst you know, to create wealth and employment opportunities. The knowledge what we created is we represent through Goddess Saraswati and if you are able to convert that knowledge into wealth, it's nothing but creation of wealth is nothing but Lakshmi in our Hindu culture. So people or countries who are able to create equilibrium between these two forces, the knowledge and wealth, they have emerged as a, a developed economy, happy people, wealthy people. So IPR plays very, very important role. I hope all the participants take note of the importance of IPR. Try to inculcate that culture of an IPR. Question, status quo should be questioned. You know, problem should be identified. Try to find out a solution to that problem. That is nothing but intellectual property. And that is nothing but innovation. That is, if you're able to put this IP and innovation into practice, it creates wealth and employment opportunities for all of us. And it will lead us to a happy life for, for all of us. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, if there are any questions, we'll be able to answer at the end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Prashottam, for the amazing presentation. And it was indeed enlightening. Now I would like to call Ms. Devi, Partner Patents, Computers and Electronics, KS Partners. Thanks, Vansh. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, uh, Dr. Purushottam, uh, can you please uh, stop the screen share? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, good evening. Um, let me start with a story of uh, prey and predators. We all know the story we have been studying in our school. And so this picture, with this picture, we can get an analogy on the, the real world business that is happening. Uh, that is the small companies, uh, you know, um, get dominated in their business by big companies and big companies by the bigger companies. Now, this is not happening now. The reality has changed. In the current world, we have, um, you know, the bigger companies and smaller companies competing with each other. And especially if you have IP, universities, academic institutions also can compete with big companies. So that is the importance of uh, intellectual property. So that's why we are going to talk about how to make the intellectual property more powerful by um, you know, monetizing it, uh, converting into money. So my name is Devi, and I'm a partner and patent attorney from KNS Partners. Uh, you may be thinking, who is this KNS Partners law firm? So we are an intellectual property law firm. Uh, what happened is like a couple of decades back uh, in US, they uh, somebody filed a patent for turmeric. So we all know turmeric is very useful to heal the wounds. If there is any wound, our mother always, you know, used to say, put the turmeric on it. In, even in ancient uh, days, there were historical records saying that, you know, the turmeric is used for healing the cut wounds. 
so uh, the government of india approached us and we we were able to cancel those patents in us and bring back the the technology the bring back the turmeric the traditional knowledge to india so that is uh, that is one of the things that we have we were able to successfully uh, you know bring back and now traditional knowledge uh, in india is 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 kept in a library and uh, we nobody can file a patent on anything which is traditionally known uh, as we all know uh, dr purushottaman also talked about lot of uh, importance and uh, uh, you know benefits of intellectual property uh, we could see lot of universities now filing intellectual property especially patents uh, and uh, this one this is one example and also the in, the intellectual property office the ipo in india also have uh you know published uh, annual reports every year and the latest uh, report says that these are the top universities that have been filing a number of patents and uh, they have been able to um go up the rank uh, in the university level so definitely yes intellectual property is very very essential and um so let us give a recap of what is intellectual property uh, we all know about it but still you know whatever we think about out of our human intellect our human mind the ideas the the creative art or creative work whatever we we uh, it comes out of our human mind or intellect it is intellectual property and definitely it has certain commercial value and we can protect it by registering with the government so we have to submit a request to the government to register our intellectual property so you can compare it with like our physical real property like we have a home we have a land how we register we register go to the registry office and get it registered and they give a certificate that we own that property similarly intellectual property also has to be registered with the government and they give you the ownership and then you can say you are the owner of this particular technology or particular ip whatever is the you have protected so that's why they call this uh, intellectual property as an intangible asset and uh, it is the validity of these in protection is only for a fixed period uh, like in case of patents it's only 20 years and after that the technology becomes available for anyone because the patent expires and anyone can use the technology now ipr so what is intellectual property right so when i register the ip my creative work i get a right on it that is called intellectual property so for each and every creative work that we do there are different types of rights so there are patents trademark copyright so it's a bundle of rights let me give you a simple example of what is intellectual property uh, for those who don't know it so this is a car this is a product so there are lot of intellectual property in it and they can be protected by the respective rights so for example body design of the car can be protected by uh, design registration uh, another example is this is the seats the seats has a unique style the way in which these uh, seats are designed they look the appearance can be protected by design or copyright similarly the seat has a specific functionality in many of the cars we have seen the cars get automatic uh, get heated during winter days Uh, so there are different functionalities they can be adjustable so these can be protected by patent because the technology the seat functionality is a technology and uh, again the engine transmission technology again can be protected by patent and the logo uh, with which we identify who what is the brand of this car like we have maruti toyota so we have different uh, brands of the car similarly the logo will indicate what is the brand of the car and the sometimes we have it is written a manufacturer name like bmw benz it's all written so this is a, a something that which identifies who is the manufacturer of the product this should be registered as a trademark so uh, definitely i these are the intellectual property uh, which is going to help any business to compete with their competitors also for academic institutions or universities ip is really important because of the reason it's going to help in your ranking nirf ranking and definitely with uh, it will also attract more joint collaborations joint on uh, ventures or partnership with industries 
so if you have developed something which the industry wanted to manufacture and sell they can uh, sign a joint venture they can collaborate with you and because of which you will generate revenue so that is the ip monetization so converting your ip into money is the uh, or revenue is the ip monetization and once you generate revenue you will again put those money into r and d and that will increase your more r and d thereby you will establish a innovation ecosystem within your uh, university or academic institution and finally you will also able to enhance your reputation and attract more talents in terms of students and faculties so these are some of the benefits there are a lot of benefits of ip and uh, so as we already discussed ip monetization is converting your idea to uh, revenue so there are uh, different strategies for it i am going to make it very simple uh, the first strategy is like you sell your products on your own uh, uh, which is protected which where you have a patent on it or you have a design protection on it so you can sell it on own but you know this strategy is not suitable for academic institutions because they don't have the capability to manufacture and sell the product in the market so what happen is they license the technology to industries they transfer the technology to the companies who can develop and sell so in case if you are not willing to license the technology you can also have spin offs what is spin off spin off is basically the a company a startup would be formed uh, based on from taking the help and investment and support from the academic institution so they are called spin off so they are not the regular startups that we see today they are spin offs so there is a difference between spin off and startups these spin offs are always supported by the academic institutions or the uh, universities or in another alternative strategy is you can sell your patent you can sometimes if you want to uh, uh, you know uh, if if there is a company who is interested in the technology who sees there is a huge demand of a product they can buy patents uh, who who is actually owning that technology they can buy the patents from that company even we, you can pledge your uh, ip you can pledge your patents uh, like a collateral in bank to get loans so that is also there so these are some of the ip transactions this is another strategy and the last one is uh, you can enforce your ip now today i have a patent on a product or a technology and i see that another company is misusing it in the sense they are using it without my permission they are copying the technology they are replicating the product without my permission without my knowledge so that means they are infringing my intellectual property infringing my patent so in that case you should definitely uh, you can file a suit of infringement you can file a case against them in in the courts and you can claim damages uh that is the for the for uh, you know they have made some profit by selling your technology or the product which you own it so they those profits should be given back to you as a damages so this is a, another way of uh, getting uh, generating revenue from your ip for universities generally the tip here is like if you go to conferences where you do the technical disclosures or where uh, the patent publications happen you know this can attract lot of commercial interest one example i can say is we work with a, a, a defense uh, organization and uh, they by filing a pct a international application they got lot of commercial interest from other countries uh, they saw this technology and they they wanted to license it so there are different ways to get the generate the revenue from the uh, ip but for that you need to have a strong ip i can give you a, a simple case study or example post it note story uh, 3m is the company which developed this post it notes and definitely uh, we all have been using this post it notes in our desk uh, work desk so what happened is when they they actually wanted to develop a strong uh, glue adhesive because 3m is a company known for producing lot of adhesives uh, now accidentally they came up with a very weak adhesive they don't know what to do with that what to how to use it so they they let that gum for 2 years and after that 
they found the real purpose of that uh, glue and they have used it in the post-it notes. So you can reuse, it's a reusable adhesive. So you can use the paper, you can stick it on a surface and you can use it again on another surface. So now by uh, uh, this post-it notes have been, they have been selling like, uh, you know, 50 billion number of post-it notes they have been selling every year. And uh, they are were able to generate $1 billion as an estimate, uh, as annual uh, sales. So this is one example where you can monetize your IP because they have a patent on the post-it notes. So as long as the patent um, is valid, they were able to generate a lot of revenue. Now the patent is expired, but still they have a lot of, uh, you know, patents keep on. They have filed by improving the adhesive technology on the post-it notes and they were able to capture the market. So this one example is like you can sell the product by yourself when you have a strong IP. The second example is uh, like if you don't have uh, the capability to manufacture and sell it, then you license it. So here this uh, uh, Coke can actually this is a patented uh, flip flop uh, can, lid of the can. It was licensed, this technology was licensed to Coca-Cola company and uh, they were able to uh, generate over $500 million per year. So this is a second example which aligns with your licensing technology. If you, are, uh, you have a patent and you feel the technology has a demand, definitely you can license it to a company who is capable of uh, selling in the market. So that is the power of uh, uh, monetizing your IP. And these are some of the examples where all universities have been able to uh, generate revenue because of the IP. So for that, you need to understand what is the, uh, uh, you know, the, the relevant uh, product, what is relevant to the industry, relevant to the public, what are the pain points or what are the problems that we have to solve. You have to identify those problems and you have to generate ideas to solve it and then you get an IP on it. So uh, let me ex explain you in the steps. So understand the market relevance, understand the reality. That is what is happening in the industry, what is happening in the technology, how the technology are advancing. You may also understand the problems that faced today. Then you generate a lot of eligible ideas or what are uh, innovations also we can call and you protect them. You secure the IPR, uh, you get the protection on it. And then you can also consider filing at least the international application because when uh, we, um, we have a technology, we don't know what would be the uh, real uh, demand or uh, interest in other countries. So we, we have to, uh, you know, kind of, you know, we cannot uh, assure today that it is going to be a technology useful in countries like US or uh, Europe, but definitely we can provide that scope by filing a international application. So tomorrow we can file um, a patent application in those countries because, uh, you know, IPs are territorial, which means that I get a patent in India, I can only protect my technology in India. If somebody is copying my technology in other country, I cannot stop them from copying until I have a patent in that country. So it's a territorial right. So you have to have patents in countries where you are going to sell your product. So that's why today you may not know what are the countries that your product may be in demand. So definitely it is important. At least you file an international application where you can have scope for filing a uh, certain application in other countries in future. Also, you need to understand what is the value of your IP. Today, I'm investing so much of money in filing IPs. What is the return on investment? What is the, uh, you know, uh, the return I get by investing uh, uh, this money on this technology? So your technology should be strong. It should be able to get commercialized. Then you can get your return on investment. So you need to help uh, get uh, help from relevant experts to get the uh, determine what is the ROI, and also then you have to also uh, you know uh, uh, determine which is the best monetization strategy for me, and accordingly you go ahead with that. So this is the uh, uh, IPR exchange is the platform is a marketplace where the is, is initiated by the uh, the government of India 
here you can see a lot of products have been listed and uh, you can uh, you know uh, search for any technology which you are interested you are can license you can buy you can sell your patent uh, this is a, a marketplace for uh, all ip uh, you know ipr transactions there's also a similar platform given by the world intellectual property this is especially for green technologies for sustainable technologies only so you can also register with this uh, website and if you have a technology you have developed something on the uh, climatic conditions addressing the climate changes problems or anything related to green technology sewage treatment so many uh, technology uh, so many areas are there so if you are have developed uh, so such technologies and you are you have a patent you can use this marketplace and uh, you can go in for exchanging your ip or you can license or you can find suitable partners or licensees for your technology so the the final slide this is my final slide the final takeaway is that we need to understand where we stand what is the landscape of the technology or the industry or what is the customers actually the public really need what is the problem that they are facing and what is important for us to solve now and once you understand you have to generate ideas and secure protection for those ideas and then you can or uh, uh, you know um, or generate revenue out of it so when you are securing protection that is filing patents or trademarks or copyright definitely you need to understand keep in mind that in future this can be useful in other countries so you have to properly formulate a filing strategy always academic institutions should have a ipr policy this policy will help you understand like uh, who owns the ip so if a student uh, doing phd with a university is generating something uh, developing a new technology now there will be a, a question like who owns that uh, technology who owns the ip on the technology and how much is the royalty that this particular student is going to receive if the technology is getting licensed so these are certain uh, nitty gritties that will help uh, you know understand how to manage and generate and manage ip all these things will be placed in the ipr policy and also setting up a office of technology transfer is very important because this office is going to help you to identify the licensees identify the industries uh, take your technology into the market uh, and it help you in all the ip monetization uh, process so always it's important you have to know what is the best uh, strategy for uh, the technology for the institution and accordingly you need to proceed so that is the uh, end of my slide if you have any questions please go ahead thank you sir we for your amazing presentation and i would like the audience to ask any questions from our uh, panel if any we can you please check if there are any questions uh, no not as of now there are no questions yet we are keeping a window of another 2 or 3 minutes the audience can post as many questions as they want are there any participants first of all <laughs> how many participants are there We have around thirty-five participants as of. Good. So this is the challenge for all of us to secure participants first before we put in all our efforts. This is a big challenge. so we can't we do some research on the how to get more participants for such kind of webinars that's true sir <laughs> so i think so we don't have any questions from the audience so uh, thank you ms devi and thank you dr pushottam for your valuable time and enlightening us with your valuable knowledge about ipr we hope we get to see you again and thank you for uh, sparing time for it Okay thank you thank you so much for a wonderful session thank you vanshan thank you